You're watching Las Vegas One, news and information 24-7. He's been labeled an extortionist and had his story ignored by Fox News. But now, the man whose wife had an affair with U.S. Senator John Ensign is telling his story exclusively on Face to Face. Tough questions, direct answers. This is Face to Face with John Ralston. Welcome to Face to Face. I'm John Ralston. Doug Hampton has been hounded by the media since Senator John Ensign admitted an affair with Hampton's wife, Cindy. He's kept quiet until now. Doug Hampton joins me to tell his story over two days, exclusively right here on Face to Face. Appreciate your coming on the program, sir. Thank you. You're welcome. You know how you've been portrayed uh, in, in the media, that, that, that uh, you're a guy who worked for John Ensign, uh, your wife has an affair with John Ensign, you leave, John Ensign's repentant, and all you want to do is get money from him. In fact, here's what John Ensign has had his spokesman say about you. Within the past month, Doug Hampton's legal counsel made exorbitant demands for cash and other financial benefits on behalf of his client. Doug Hampton's outrageous demand was referred to Senator Ensign's legal counsel, who's handling the matter going forward. Is this really just about a guy whose wife had an affair trying to get money? No. What's no. it about? This, I think this story goes um, a lot further back to to the uh, the letter and how the letter kind of insinuated that something happened at Christmas in 2007 that I think really genuinely changed um, the direction of things and uh, talk about be specific what, what are you referring, you're referring to your letter to Fox News in which you, you tried to get them to, to, to get onto this story they they did not but you said a lot of things uh, in there including you said please help me this should not be how the leadership of our country should be allowed to behave I need justice help and restitution for what Senator Ensign has done to me and my family you know most people would just go and you know they found out their, their boss or anybody else had an affair with their wife they go punch him out instead look how you're being portrayed this is what you've got to, this is why you've got to tell your story sir you're being portrayed as a guy who didn't punch out John Ensign kept working for him for a little while he helped you find jobs and, and what you should have done is just punch the guy out right that's what a lot of people are probably sure, saying sure what's and the all truth? of those emotions the truth is we were going through a really difficult time at the end of December. We had uh, had a robbery at our home. We live not in the same neighborhood as the Ensigns, but uh, in an adjacent neighborhood, uh, relatively close to each other, and we had a robbery. And uh, our home was broken into, some doors were knocked down, and we were asked to go over and uh, to stay with the Ensigns. We're close, really close, close friends. We've been close friends a long time, um, very close while we live here in Nevada. And while living in the house, uh, Cindy and John um, got together. John, while you moved into their house, uh, they, they invited you to their house yeah, to John, stay when your house has been yes. robbed, and they, they, the, the affair began then? Yes, the relationship began then. What transpired was an event where we were going to go pick up our son. He was coming back from out of state for Christmas. Uh, I kind of intercepted um, a text message. We were going to go pick up his girlfriend on the way down to the airport. The Ensigns were going to go with us. We were like family. We were going to go pick up Brandon. And Cindy went up to the door of Brandon's girlfriend's house, and uh, the text message went off. And it was, it was a really kind of a, a tough message between John and Cindy, and I confronted him. Um, and what, what did the message say, Mr. It just, it just dealt with the fact that they, you know, that they had kind of enjoyed um, being together. And so I confronted Cindy, confronted John, and a big occurrence took place uh, the 23rd of December where I confronted them, and they had, had admitted that something had gone on, something took place. The following day, with all the family together, all of our kids, all of the Ensign kids, we confronted this issue in the Ensign house, and, and John broke down, and, and Cindy was beside herself, couldn't believe what had happened. But things changed from then. Cindy really, truly, I think, was devastated over what happened, couldn't fathom what had taken place. But John... Things began to change in the early part of January. I began to notice things about John, distancing, things in our relationship. It wasn't like this real sorrowful man that had done this thing and just couldn't believe what had happened to these two families. He kind of went back to pursuing Cindy, texting Cindy, calling Cindy, saying, hey, how are you doing? Reaching out to Cindy. Um, we're on recess 
And th these are really difficult days, really difficult times. And then the February incident occurs, where first part of February work is tough. We travel together. Um, I'm going to let you get into the details of that, but here's a question most people are asking. Why did you continue to work for the guy after this happened? I mean, yes, you were friends. This guy betrayed you in a way we, that, that is unimaginable we, we to most people. We both worked for him. This put us in an unbelievable position. Our families, our, our lives were so intertwined. Our kids go to school together. Cindy is his treasurer. I am a top official. I mean, this is significant news. This is. This is just hard to get your head around what's going on Why here. Why didn't you leave? Why didn't you break off the, the personal and professional relationship? You know, I, I believe Cindy. I believe Cindy then. I believe that Cindy wanted to get away and that had John not been the pursuer in all of this, this would have never happened. This wouldn't have taken place this way. And I have really seen that in her over this period of time. There's elements of this that just are not true, that are just not accurate in the way it's being depicted. I, I want you to talk about what, what those elements are, and we're going to get more details from Doug Hampton, the former chief of staff to John Ensign, and what really happened between John Ensign and the Hampton family. Back in a moment.